Hi guys and welcome back. On this week's vlog, we will talk about things that you can do to stay inspired and motivated. I'm no expert at this, but these are a few tips and experience which works pretty well for me when I start staring at a blank canvas. Social media is full of recommendation, but most of the time they are heavily advertised and packed with people. I've been wanting to get out the city and visit places which aren't too crowded, someplace quiet and close to the waters. So the best way to do this is to open Google Maps, zoom in on areas which are close to the sea, and I'm glad I found this quiet hidden gem by chance. After scouting around this gorgeous blue yard caught my eye, we were greeted by the owners and they introduced us to their yard. My name is Pia. They were even very kind to give us a tour in their little cozy home. It's nice when you get to meet people at random places, share new thoughts and learn about their life. I wasn't aiming for anything perfect, but just enjoying the experience of being present at that very moment, enjoying the wind, the sunset, and feel the movement of the calm waters as I paint. After yesterday's trip, I got a new fresh breath of inspiration to paint more sailboats and I wanted to repaint a scene from the harbour with a few pictures that I took. So when we were there yesterday, I was just snapping lots and lots of pictures and videos and I didn't even realize that I captured this. So I think I like to paint this lovely sunset. Can you see that? This is so gorgeous. So yeah, I'll maybe do a tutorial or another video on this. So stay tuned. And then this is one of the pictures I took yesterday when painting and on site. And this is the painting that I did of the boat, Pia. And I'm thinking maybe I'd like to repaint this scene. And I managed to capture a shot of the boat. There we have it. So yeah, this is a nice shot of the actual boat. So maybe I'll just use this as my reference photo for today. And then let's recreate this painting. Let's start with a quick sketch of the sailboat. So to give you a little background, her name is Pia, aka Pain in the S. What a cool name. She was built in Canada where this name was given by the previous owner. And now she travels around the shores of Malaysia.
I'm using the a la prima method and wetting both sides of my paper. With this, it will help to keep the paper wet much longer and give more time to paint. But while doing this, make sure to use a waterproof board. And here I'm using an acrylic board which I got it from my local store. With this point, this is something which I had to learn the hard way. When I first started painting, I would go online, search the web for pictures and keep scrolling and scrolling hoping to find that perfect picture that would help me produce a remarkable painting. Then it became a habit where I spent hours and hours just hunting for the right picture. It was tiring and the results were not great. Let me tell you why. These pictures were already taken in HD and professionally edited. It was so easy to get lost in trying to repaint every single detail in the picture. The results were unnatural and it didn't have its own personality. And then looking back, I realized the painting turned out looking like the photographer's style instead of the painter's style. But when I take my own pictures, just like this one of Pia, the sailboat, I develop a connection with it. Every shot taken has its own story to tell, my story to tell. And because these pictures are raw and unedited, there's plenty of room to add my imagination and creativity to develop my style and tell my story. So now it's lunchtime and I'm done with my first layer here. So I'm going to take a break and go grab some food. Remember to take breaks and have a happy full stomach. So this is my view today. We are at a lovely park. It's our favorite park that we come to every weekend because it's also pet friendly and our dog Angel loves it. And I have my gear all set up. So yeah, let's start. So I just did this yesterday. I did a vlog about this so I'll probably upload this next week so stay tuned guys I'll be showing my process of how to improve your painting after a plein air session and how you can practice at home So here I'm just doing a very small thumbnail sketch and this is just like a very quick practice on creating distance and depth in a landscape and just showing you my view. I'm not sure if you can see there's the bridge there towards the end and then we have this patch of grass right in front and then we have the trees on the side. So what I'm trying to do is to replicate this and with depth in painting by using area perspective techniques which is one of them is by using colors using cool colors you can see the distance trees they're cooler almost bluish and then as we get closer it comes warmer with more warm greens 
and yeah just trying to replicate that on my painting right here and using that cooler colors for the distant trees and then as we get closer the trees get bigger and then here we can have lots of warmer greens here as well as the patch of grass and also to help create distance adding more details like all these little tiny dots and flowers you can see this will also help to establish depth and distance in the painting especially when it comes to landscapes so in nature landscapes it requires more of aerial perspective as compared to a cityscapes or in architecture paintings so yeah this is quite fun just a quick small thumbnail sketch practice this area perspective I've previously completed the first layer and now all that's left to do is paint in the details. If you're interested, the full process of this painting tutorial is already up on my Patreon. Do check it out, the link will be available below. Okay, so you can see here that Pia has this really outstanding bright blue and let's try to find a blue that I have in my paints so I think I'm going to go with ultramarine blue and we have a few brands here so I think I'm going to go with this one French ultramarine blue So we have this color, I think it looks really really similar. Let's do a swap. Yeah, so I think this is a very nice color. So I'm going to use this paint. The next point is what I always remind to be kind to myself. It is totally okay to set small achievable goals. And it is okay if I did not achieve anything impressive. Instead of aiming to produce a huge scenery painting, the goal that I chose at the park that day was just to practice aerial perspective with a small thumbnail sketch. So in the end, just enjoy the process cause little by little goes a long way. Here, I'm switching over to a liner brush. I like how it's thicker at the base so it can hold larger amounts of paints. It's always tricky when painting fine lines like this. I try to break them into portions and connect them after. Otherwise, I just use the sides of the paper as a ruler. Orange being the complementary colour of blue and adding bits of this colour will help to create more contrast in the painting. I 
would usually keep my old paintings in a file with plastic sheets to keep them protected and away from sunlight. And when I feel unmotivated, I'll look back at these old paintings that I've done. It becomes very inspiring because I'm able to see how far I've come and how much I've grown. It gives me a great sense of achievement and reminded me that I'm on the right track, not to give up and keep going. Then I will go into the details and analyze the subjects I've painted and the techniques that I've used to see whether there are areas which I could still improve on. Writing them down helps me to remind myself so I can work on them another time when I run out of inspirations to paint. Now let me show you how I would usually analyze my painting using the sailboat paintings that I've just completed. Alright, so after a whole day of painting, I'm finally done with this one. And I'd just like to do a comparison with all three paintings. So this is the one that I did plein air that day on location and you can see obviously it is not as good. The waves are a bit off but overall I'm pretty happy with this considering it's my first time painting on site. And then the, day, the next day I wanted to repeat this scenery and try painting at home to get a good practice. So this is the second piece. You can see that for this one, slight improvement in the waves. Learning from this, I think the paper is not the right paper. So I switched. This paper looks a little bit rough in texture. So I didn't really like how it turned out. So I switched to a different type of paper and you can see this one, the waves turn out smoother and the texture of the paper doesn't show through that much. I also make sure to get the perspective right, the proportion of the yard right and also extending it out a little bit more. As compared to this, this looks a little short so this extends out and again my, by making it longer I am able to create a bit more depth in this painting and yeah overall I'm really happy with how this turned out so I'd just like to let you guys know that there's no one perfect painting it always takes a few tries for me I did three attempts to get it right so I hope that this can be an inspiration for you not to give up if it failed the first time if not second time, do it again until you get it right. So yeah, that's all for my video today. I hope that you enjoyed watching me paint and hopefully take back some tips on how to practice painting and get it in, getting it right. It's all about practice. Many, many, many practice. So don't give up and all the best to you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.